Let's bring Angelo Cataldi in. I couldn't wait to get him on. Happy New Year to you. This is a great New Year present for all of you out there. Um, he has he has still, in my opinion, the heart and soul of the entire Philadelphia sports community and knows what these fans are thinking right now. And I got to tell you here, Angelo, just give me your takeaways on what you saw yesterday. Well, I'm going to start by just saying this, Stan, all right? You don't need guests. Like, I've heard you before you I come on many times here, and you have the answers. You know what you're talking about. It's th this the fact that people are surprised by what has happened the last five weeks is astonishing to me because the team wasn't good when they were 10 and 1. We were watching the team win games in haphazard, lucky, ridiculous ways. And then they came home to roost. The Niners destroyed them. The Cowboys destroyed them. The backup quarterback of Seattle drove 94 yards in the last minute to beat them. They stink. Do you understand? They're not winning anything. And if you want to pin it down, I'll pin it down for you. Because you're right. Yesterday was a microcosm. This team's coaching is abysmal. It's atrocious. It's it's like... A, it's like the college games that Nick Sirianni once participated in. One of those Division three college teams. They're awful. And I'm going to tell you something. I don't think he ever knew what the hell he was doing. Because he damn well doesn't now. Here's how I can prove it. All right, Dan? When you're a coach and you come out at 10 and 1. I went back and looked this up this morning. I got nothing going on. I'm retired now. <laughs> and I looked it up. Right, Dan? And I went. Uh, what was he saying? He went, you know, yeah, the record's great. This was a good win for us, but we still have a lot to work on. We have a lot of teaching to do. How's that teaching going on the defensive side of the ball? Let's just look at that. Because the defense, I have never seen a defense this bad. 449 yards, four touchdown drives of 70 yards or more in the second half against one of the worst offenses in the NFL. And they didn't punt. If you're, they, ne they never used a punt. Britain Covey never got on the field, right? Just explain this to me, all right? If you were using those wins as teaching devices, how's it working out for you? How you doing? <laughs> How, how's that defense coming along? You've had a month and a half, two months to fix it. What have you done, and why have you been completely unable to do a damn thing about it? Damn, I'm going to just say it, all right? There's a lot of people in this city thinking it, because a hundred of them emailed me this morning, all right? They don't think Sirianni should go beyond this year. You they think don't. he's coaching You think he's coaching these next couple weeks for his job? I, now I do, based on the fan response, all right? Here's the thinking the fans are giving me, Dan. See if this works with you. If you're going to fire Doug Peterson after he won a Super Bowl, right, why wouldn't you fire Nick Sirianni after he lost one? They know this. First of all, Howie Roseman would never acknowledge that the roster isn't great. He doesn't care about live. He thinks this is a Super Bowl caliber roster. So he's got to be watching this going, well, it's coaching. Now, he's right about it. Co coaching is the number one problem on this team right now. What are you going to do about it? You want to bring him back? You want to bring this guy back another year? Couldn't fix all this for all these weeks? Couldn't – it got worse and worse and worse regardless of the opponent? You going to bring that guy back? You think that the, 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 the definition of insanity is keep doing things the same way and expect a different result. Nick Sirianni can't coach. I'm just going to say it to his strength. Dan, you're watching what I'm watching. Does that look like a guy no, who's got a no. coach? I, we, you and I have said it since day one, and I've said it like, I like you know, and again, I've been with you all along, Angelo, and I think you and I have been on that one island by ourselves where we both have said this. I don't see it. I got to tell you this too, Angelo. Jonathan Gannon coached the hell out of that oh, crappy-ass football team yeah. and coached the pants off of Sirianni. Look at Shade Steichen. Those two guys oh. were actually better last year than I actually thought 
Right. And I got to tell you, Sirianni is the two and five coach, Angelo. We saw at the beginning of the 2021 year, he's even said it. This is my offense. Yeah. Okay. It looks two and five. Yeah. No, Sirianni demoted himself from calling the plays right away when Steichen was there. Because do you really believe that, Angelo, or do you think that Howie and the owner came in and said, sure you know not. what, it might be yeah. in the best interest to pass sure. it over to Steichen? Right. So if they knew in the first year that Nick was not a good play caller, were they then automatically starting to wonder how good a coach he was? Because he's an offensive coach. He was an offensive coordinator himself. If he can't call plays and his defense, he doesn't do anything with his defense, what's he there for? What's he doing? How? Uh, oh, the brilliance after the games? With these comments he makes? We got to stick together. Did you see A.J. Brown at the end of the game? Fox was smart. They knew when the Eagles took that field goal. Never went to Brown in the big that big series. Two runs by uh, the quarterback, and then they try a screen pass to Gainwell, right? You watch A.J. Brown. You think he's A.J. Brown is in favor of what he's seeing in the coaching right now? Uh, how many of the people have has Sirianni lost in the locker room? Now, he yelled at uh, Hassan Reddick on the sideline two weeks ago, screamed in his face, right? Devontae Smith, he, he yelled at Devontae Smith. Who's on his side right now? Are they playing hard? Does the defense look like it no. even gives a damn? No, absolutely. Coaching. Absolutely. It's all tell coaching. Tell, speaking of that, tell me if you I, – I personally think Jonathan Gannon put the cheese out in the trap in that last drive, and I'm going to tell you why. When he went for the onside kick, he knew if we hold them to a field goal, they can't stop us. <laughs> They're going to win the game at worst, right. right? He knew he would score a touchdown and take it into overtime because they hadn't punted all afternoon. Yeah, They went right into it with those lame-ass runs. They kicked the field goal. They stopped him with the bad play calling right. and situational play calling. Gannon knew he had, I right. went like this. The Cardinals are going to win this. Right. I Here's was convinced the, the Cardinals were going to win. You know there's no one who hates Gannon more than I do. I that on, onside on, I kick. People thought the onside kick failed. It's I think it was a success. He, he, he realized if he shortened the field, he would get another possession and the against clock. that defense. You're 100% right. Dan, save the time. Your knowledge of football is intricate. Honestly, that's exactly what happened. And then they fell right into the trap. The minute they hit, kicked the field goal, did you say to yourself, they fell in the Cardinals trap? Now they're going to blow it. Now they're yeah, going to I said the Cardinals. No, no, I went like this. Do you yeah. know what he did? Instead of kicking it down the field where most yeah. the time would take off, it, it would have played into the Eagles running the clock out. Yeah. So what did he did? He saved the time and he saved field position yeah. by kicking it there. Stop him there. Guess what you did? You're right. You probably saved a minute off the clock. Easy. You got the ball back again, and yeah. you drove him one. Exactly. And and you know what else? I'll even take it a step further. Let's say the Eagles had good play calls when they were at the 20. They certainly didn't, but let's say they did. And they scored the touchdown, and they went up seven. You know what he would have done? He would have gone for two. Absolutely. He would have won in regulation anyway. They couldn't stop the two-pointer either. He, he knew he had them when he watched the defense that he coached the last two years and went, well, they're not going to be able to stop us. How bad do you have to be? That is a 3-12 and 12 team. And, and that's the way their coach looked at it. So of the three guys, now let's look at it. Steichen, Gannon, and Sirianni. All together last year, they went to the Super Bowl. Rank them in terms of intelligence now after what you saw. Steichen, Gannon, Sirianni. <laughs> I go Steichen, Gannon, then a big gap, and then yeah. Sirianni. No, no, no. I go, more like this, the three. I, I go more like this, Angelo. Steichen, Gannon, <laughs> the uh, janitor, and then Sirianni. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, jan the janitor. And Big Dom, I think. You got to put Big Dom in there, right? Put Big Dom in there. Yes. 
Dan, we're laughing, right? But this city is, this is New Year's Day. And the city of Philadelphia is bleeding with anger and frustration that they finally, the, all the people that weren't on board now all get it. This team stinks because their coach can't coach. That's the problem. And How that's what my damage. take would be if I was on WIP this oh morning. My God. Uh, oh, my, my God. That guy can't coach. And now it's just the question of whether or not Howie Roseman and Jeff Lurie are going to cut ties on a guy. Here's the kicker. Here's the kicker. I looked this up. The man, the coach with the best winning percentage in the history of the Philadelphia Eagles, 0.680. Nick Sirianni, are they going to fire that guy in a playoff season when he has the highest winning percentage in the history of the franchise? Yes. Yes, you know I why? think they are. They are, because I'll tell you why. They believe that record is them and not him. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. They, You're don't, right they think he's a byproduct right. of their culture, Angelo. Yeah. They, they, they think, see – they think they can plug anybody in there because they're so egomaniac yeah. that they think they'll find another guy, yeah. they'll put a guy in there, and they're going to come up with it and go like this because, like you said, Angelo, the owner, the GM, and the kid who's head of analytics, they're not taking the blame for this. Right. No, they're not. Now, here's what I am as a huge Eagles fan who is, I mean, I want it so badly for them to win it all this year. Now I obviously see that they're not going to even sniff that. I want them to lose against the Giants. And I think they will. Tyrod Taylor put up some numbers yesterday. They if he started the game against them, he would have beat them. Tyrod Taylor is waiting for them next Sunday at the Meadowland. Now I know the game probably won't have much meaning. They're probably going to the Eagles are going to be the five seed. They're probably going to Tampa, whatever. But they're going to have to play their regulars because they stunk it out the last five weeks, all right? They lose that game. Then I'll put my house on it. They'll lose the, uh, the playoff game. Now they're done having lost six out of seven. Who survives that? No one. Can't you can't survive, survive that when you're 10-1 and one and you're paying the amount of money you're paying yep. on that side of the ball. How about this one, Angelo? How much damage has the front office and ownership done to that locker room and oh. to the players and to the coaching staff with that insane move with Patricia? Patricia, by the way, too, Angelo, oh. he doesn't know his personnel. I no. mean, he's a man cover corner guy. Oh. He's oh. always been. Now he's running man corners with zone corners. And you're like, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. No. It's It just doesn't make sense. No. That it's it's incredible to me that they looked at their staff and they thought this guy, who has never been good at that job, would suddenly be good at that job. But they, ha I guess, they thought, well, Desai is not getting it done. He was a terrible choice because again, they didn't go out and take a defensive coordinator who had a record of success doing it. You're a Super Bowl team. Do you understand? Most guys would love to be the coach on that team. And you went out and got a guy who had no track record for success doing it and said, here, you'll be great at it. Stupid. All of it's stupid. And it starts from the top. Mr. Pontification, Jeff Lurie. I'm going to tell you, this is what I see and how that play calling becomes so poor. You know, when you have an analytics department and you have the owner's son that's giving the information and the intel. This is why A.J. Brown – you know what? I thought A.J. Brown was being an asshole, but now guess what? No. I think he just doesn't want to say and call out the coaching staff and yeah, the game no. plan on what's going on. So I'm, I've am i backtracked on that. I'm telling you, the reason that – you saw Steichen. That was not analytics, Angelo, going no. for it on – get this. He no. couldn't run that play no. in Philly last year if he wanted to do an onside kick. Right. That's not an analytics play. No. That's going like this and thinking, you're oh, right. I'm in the field, I need clock. They can't stop us. Stop a field goal, we win. That's on the <laughs> sideline thinking. No, it's brilliant. It's br I'll, I'll give you that. And I can't stand the guy, but it's it's 
based in an utter disrespect for the Eagles' defense, that this guy with the 29th-ranked passing offense had no fear None. that he would get the ball and not be able to take it the length of the field to win the game. No fear. Well, if you're in that spot, if you have reached that point, you have to basically start all over. The defense is rotting at the core. It's rot. It's awful. They can't stop the run now. They could never stop the pass. They don't. They look confused half the time out there. And Barrett Brooks on a post game show said he looked like they were quitting out there. They did. The game they had to win. He said they got out muscled. They got out fought by a three and twelve team. What does that tell you about the willed? They right? were outwilled. Yes, by a team playing for nothing. Nothing. On the road. Can they were on the road. That? The Eagles were home. And they didn't even have their top wide receiver, Angelo. No. He wasn't active for the game. Yes. I didn't even know who the hell some of these guys were. I'm like, right. who's Kyler Murray throwing the ball yeah. to? I mean, wow. James Conner. I liked him at Pitt. Good no. kid. Great story. But I mean, 130 yards rushing. No, I'll tell. I was watching James Conner. I thought Jimmy Brown came back <laughs> from the dead. Right? Did you see the? Did you see the tackles he was breaking? He was going right through them. My God! Lack of will. That's lack, lack of, of will. will. Like, they Angelo, don't care. They've checked damage, out. How much damage do you think that this coaching staff and front office has done to Jalen Hurts' development? That's a good question. That's a good question. Here's, here's what I can tell you based on what I'm seeing or what I'm hearing. Mike Quick does a great job with the analysis on the Eagles radio games. And Mike has made a point a lot that the best plays the Eagles have run were not plays that came in from the sideline. They were improv in the moment. They were they they had to you know, it, it flush the quarterback out of the pocket. Now run for your life, you know, that kind of thing. That's where they make the best play. But the irony is, in that last series, after the hold on Mayalata, they ran the plays that were called in. How bad were those plays? Oh, terrible. You, and, and then Sirianni's trying to tell you, you know, you don't understand. We almost had a lane. He almost had a lane. And if he got a lane, <laughs> then he would have he burst into the clear and run for miles. He's in. And I'm watching this, and I'm going, not, not even his kids are buying this crap. He's got to be a Northern Italian. He cannot Come on. be. He cannot be from where we're oh. from. This guy's more wow. of a Frenchman, Angelo. There's not well, a chance he's Italian. <laughs> my grandfather taught me a word in Italian that well describes Siriati right now. What, Bajamago? Do not. Do not. Do not. <laughs> stupid. Oh, holy stupid. cow, man! I mean, okay. So, do you think that they? Would he really, the owner, if they lose to the Giants and then yeah. lose out, do so, you think that owner it has would to really make a move and fire him in the offseason? It has to be. <laughs> what are you going to just? You're going to fire a coach with a 680 win percentage. Yes. He's going to fire the coach with the best winning percentage in Eagles history because that number is fake. That number, what they'll say, you know this as well as yeah, I do. Yeah. They'll say, hey, look at the roster. Of course he won all those games. We're brilliant at what we do. But then we got to 10 and 1, and he lost his mind. He lost his, his composure on the sideline. He lost his team. He lost the fans. And then he loses the bosses, and then he loses his job. I think he's two losses away from goodbye. It's crazy. crazy. I believe it. I believe it. Crazy that you could go from 11 months ago. <laughs> 11 yeah. months ago, yeah. Angelo. Yeah. 11 months ago. Correct. From going to the Super Bowl to being fired. Fame is fleeting. <laughs> or, or how about this? So the equity that he got for taking that team to a Super Bowl, yeah. you think it's worn out now? It's I don't off. see. Look, I... It's going to be very hard unless Howie Roseman and Jeff Lurie do something they've never done before. Look in the mirror and go, Howie looks in the mirror, he goes, look at that secondary and the linebackers I gave him. They were terrible. I'm at fault. 
<laughs> not going to happen. All right. Larry's gone. Look at the money I've spent. Look at the people I've helped. This is not acceptable to me. Who do we blame? Oh, look, there's Sirianni over there. Eh, we can bring in another yes man, another puppet. Let's let's bring another guy in. Sirianni has dazzled no one this year in the way he talks about the games. I watch him in news conferences, Dan, and I begin to wonder if he's smart at all. <laughs> you know how you, you you listen. You listen to Bill Walsh when he talked. Uh, Bill Parcells. You knew those guys knew the game. They understood the intricacies of the game. He talks too Sir, much. Sirianni gives you all this technical jumbo mumbo, but he doesn't really seem to know how to apply it. He says a lot, Angelo, but doesn't say anything. Yeah, honestly. Then... If they get rid of Sirianni at the end of the year, I'm 100% on board. I've seen enough. That you can't bring him back, it's only going to get worse. How about I this, though, Angelo? Even yeah. if you blow him out, wouldn't they just put another puppet in there again? They will. They will. They but will. then the situation doesn't rectify itself until no. you have somebody accountable for Howie Roseman, doesn't it? Don't, don't you you're, have you're right, don't this fail safe, the owner? Uh, the, the only the odor of the odor. Um, someday his son will be running the Eagles. So if you want to really feel bleak about it, go. All oh, the Lurries are going to be in charge for the next twenty five years. I'm not sure we're going to get another parade. Remember, I told you a couple weeks ago. I said this team was trending to be a five win football team. Yes, you did. Hundred percent, you said that, and that's why I don't even know why you bring on guests. Because <laughs> you're like you should just sit in front of that camera and just. Offer sage views on on football and life, but they don't believe me, and I'll tell you why. Because they they're so. And in your book, like you say, um, Eagle fans have this innate passion and love, and just desire for them, and to believe that the team is doing the right thing to win a Super Bowl and pushing things to be in the right direction. They don't want to believe that a lot of this has to do with finances and control. Right. Those are true. the two things that the Eagles, what I'm learning covering your team now, Angelo, for three years, it's money and control. Those two things supersede Lombardi. And that's why he's only won one in 30 years, because yeah. if he ran it like uh, Steve Biscotti up in uh, Baltimore ran it and how he runs that organization, Angelo, there's no, there's no getting around the fact there's Baltimore again, the number one yeah. seed in the AFC with a great. quarterback. They took a gamble on, yeah. brought a better coach in. Yeah. Guess what they did there? Yep. They wanted it. He won an MVP award a couple of years ago. Really, I didn't know anything was wrong with the offense, but you know what they said? We need him to take that next step. I saw five touchdowns over the weekend. Terrific. This guy is – Baltimore's going to win the yeah. Super Bowl again. I, I mean, think they are. Why wouldn't they bring in more qualified people? Because they don't have the same sense of security as Biscotti. They 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 feel insecure in that they were the nerd in the schoolyard, and now they're getting to run an NFL team, and uh, nobody is going to get in their way. They're not bringing any tough guys onto the organization. They're not, and they're not going to again. The last, they had a great coach and a great man, Doug Peterson a man who resonated with the city like no one. That man should have been here as long as Andy Reid was. He knows how to win. He's got the Jaguars. They shot, him, shot out there, but he, that guy is a coach. On the cusp of do, winning his second division title. They ran him out of town because he wanted to bring in assistants that he could work well with. That's what it... You won a Super Bowl and you didn't earn that right with these owners. So you're going to get used to the next Sirianni is going to be the same kind of thing. And these guys, we got one, thank God. Dan, Dan thank God we won one. And, and here's the one thing they don't understand. I did, a, a dozen, I did 25 book signings and appearances for that book of, over a month period. I was everywhere. And the number one thing, the number two thing they had me write was bleep Dallas or Dallas sucks. That was two. 
<laughs> Number one by far, go birds. Go birds, go birds. They love that team. This city loves that team as much as any city has ever loved its team. And when they are watching garbage, like what they saw yesterday, you are insulting those people. You are laughing in their face. And it's not right. And I, I got all the emails today to prove it. People are just desperately frustrated that they uh, have no chance to see another great run this year. Do and you... they're blaming it all on Sirianni. It, 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 he is the focal point. And they're right. They got to get rid of this guy. That they're, they're going to set Jalen Hurts on the same track of Carson Wentz? Yeah, that, that if they don't bring in better coaching, you know, he was fortunate. We now know Steichen was a good coach. Yeah, he was a good coach. It, it, Steichen, it too. Working with Steichen last year, working with Steichen, you saw what Jalen Hurts can accomplish. Working with uh, Brian Johnson or Nick Sirianni, you see what he could do this year. It's not even close. You need to bring in people that enhance his amazing package of talents. You need him. He's a good player with a good mindset with bad coaching. That's what's going on right now. And don't think when he was going off the field after those three play calls and that field goal, don't tell me he wasn't saying to himself, these guys don't have a clue what they're doing. Do you think they've, he's lost the locker room? He's in the process. When you lose Reddick and you lose A.J. Brown, you're, use, you're losing two of the biggest stars on each side of the ball. That permeates. You know, that, that can only go so far. Now, you got Kelsey. He's going to help you to get through that on the offense. You got uh, Brandon Graham. He's going to help you get through that on defense. But if this stuff keeps happening, you're going to lose them all. And I, I'll tell you right now, you're probably watching the final game or two of Kelsey's career and Graham's career. And it's sad that it has to end that way because they couldn't put a defense on a field. Man, I, I the, the, whole, the whole thing here with with like everybody, it's 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 in chaos right now. And I, I will throw one bit of shade on Jalen, and I'll ask you if you think it's fair. Um, Angelo, don't you think he's got to eventually be more assertive and maybe put his foot down more and be a little bit more publicly vocal about his position. Because I mean, wouldn't that, wouldn't that galvanize people? Because if it you're would. losing all those guys, because the coaching staff in the front office, and by the way, Bob Lang and all them guys are so controlling. Oh, please. That I find hey, by the way too, Angelo, you're right about having Sirianni on. Shit, I find out more about the injuries and all about the Eagles through the national guys and not the local guys. Yeah. They don't tell the local guys anything. No. Those guys who put their heart and soul into covering the team, they yeah. give, they feed them BS, and they yeah. give the national guys all the stories. I right. mean, it's, it's really – See, now, I'd battle. fight that. If I were covering the team, I would fight that. What the hell are you doing? Yeah. Why are we giving this stuff to uh, uh, the ESPN? Or what, why are you giving it to other people? We're the ones here every day. Jay Glazer I, gets more information on yeah. the Eagles than the local guys do. No. I mean, it's I mean, like Frank, that. they I, it's it's really but do you don't you think yeah. Jalen needs to maybe be a little bit more vocal and assertive in his leadership? It uh, would probably? help him if he were publicly more vocal, it would help him because it would create more of a dialogue that this these coaches are not serving Jalen Hurts well. But it's not – I don't think it's in his DNA. Remember, his father's a coach. He he played in Alabama where they just don't – you don't talk to the media. I would like to see it because what I felt today, the pulse of the city today was, man, they just need somebody to step up and go – we're not getting coached the way we need to. The coaching's a problem here. And then watch what happens in this city. It would go like wildfire right through the city because it would reinforce what fans think and what they believe. And it doesn't take a lot to start that fire. So, yeah, that would work for him. And it would help him because then they would have no choice but to, to support him with better people than what they've been doing. But I don't think he'll do it. I don't think he's. I don't think couple, he wants to go public. Couple last questions for you here, Angelo. Let me 
do, do, do you think that also that that would begin? Because I said this a couple days ago. If Jalen Hurts starts doing that, does the organization then start looking at him as Doug Peterson, where they would start looking at him mm. as a guy who is a malcontent in the locker room? Because when Doug started fighting back and pushing back because Howie was playing in Doug's sandbox and he wanted him out of that sandbox, that's when there was a friction between the two. And this is where I blame Jeffrey Laurie like I blame Jerry Jones and Jimmy Johnson. Don't, you know, There wasn't a guy in the middle to get between those two guys like Belichick and Brady to make that thing work like Kraft. Kraft made that thing work for 20 years. There's no, there's no buffer with Howie. He needs a president of an organization to have somebody that has as much power as him. Yeah. Angelo, I think it would help the organization to have more credibility and also accountability. That will never happen. You understand? Wow. For the same reason that they're not bringing in seasoned hands who have an opinion and are willing to express it. They don't want any opposition to their little world. So that's not going to happen. All right. And if, uh, would, would they be alienated by Hertz? Maybe, but, Jalen Hurts is a talented player. And with the right coaching, he's top 10, maybe top five in the league. So you want to play that game again, I think you're asking for trouble. I think what you got to do is find a way to bring in the people that will make him the great player he is capable of being. He showed it last year. He can be a great quarterback in the NFL but he's not going to be it with the coaches that are there right now. Would you bring Frank Reich in now? Well, I know that that – no, not right now. That for, Unless Frank Reich learned how to be a defensive coordinator in the last three weeks, there's not. it doesn't matter who you Plus bring in. Plus, he's got 62 offense. million reasons to hang out in Carolina no. right now. <laughs> wait, wait, let me tell you something right now. All right, Frank Reich, is he a possibility for next year? Yeah, definitely. If he wanted to come in here, either as the head coach or as an offensive coordinator, yeah. And I'm sure that Sirianni would welcome it because they're good buddies. Maybe that would be one way to fix the offense. But that isn't – that's problem B. Problem A is your defense can't stop anybody. You, you can't – you said it so well. They onside kick the ball so they would get another possession. It was a mousetrap. trap. Knew. This is the Cardinals. This is not Tom Brady. This is this is the Cardinals saying, just give us one more possession. We know know, as soon as he kicked it, I went, This is brilliant. <laughs> and and everyone's like, and, and even uh, the announcers didn't get it. And I'm like, yeah. this is brilliant. It saved field position time. Yeah. They knew they weren't gonna score, hold them the field yeah. goal, they're gonna win it. Yeah, I, that was their only chance. And I went, This is brilliant. Jonathan Gannon did that on the sidelines. Oh, I'm watching this going. It was brilliant. I've been wrong about the guy. I'll tell you what. I don't like the guy either. And by the way, do you watch the way he blitzes? Yeah. I mean, he was blitzing like his hair was on fire. Yeah. There was any of that last year. Why not? Because the bosses said, don't do it. Right. Same stuff. Oh, Dan, this is, this is not going to be good. What's about to happen the next few weeks. I'm warning you now. All right, hey, wait, hide wait. your children, hide your women. You <laughs> I got TV one one for the next game. two games because it's going to be bad. It's going to be bad. I got two last. I got one last one here for you. Please tell me behind the scenes on why Jim Schwartz left Philly oh. because I heard this. He retired. Now he's the DC, and the Browns are an eleven win team. In my opinion, because of him mm. and what he's done there. Well, with why that, did he leave here? Um, I, 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 I did they run him it. out? I, I can't answer it. We didn't love him either, Dan. He was kind of passive too. But maybe Angelo, it's because the guys made him passive. Here's the thing. Do you know what I want? I, I live in a dream world. <laughs> you know who I want to be the defensive coordinator, and I wish it would be today. Seth Joyner, brilliant, brilliant man with a ferocious attitude who takes no prisoners. Do you think, he'd be, a, do you think he'd be better than Matt Patricia? Oh, I, he would be a sensational. Are you he, kidding he, me? In my opinion, 
you know, Dem uh, D'Amico Ryan's down in Houston. Yes, same he, thing. He, exactly like that. Yeah. That's too strong a willed guy, right? For them. Well, that's too bad because you would have a great defense if Seth Joyner was overseeing it. You wouldn't be playing this kind of defense. Seth Joyner, from what I heard, I didn't see it. After the game on his podcast, I, I, I heard he had to be sedated. That he, he did. That he, he was like. Our post-game show, he was going psycho. Yeah, right? I mean, he can't believe this himself. He played in that uniform. Yeah. How the hell is this happening? On our on our on our post game show on Jacob, he was going like it just and I I was mm. we were texting back and forth and I just yeah. went it just the mm. thing doesn't have a rhyme or reason in what they're doing. There's no, it just doesn't make sense on what they're doing against nope. the run now. What they're doing, I mean, think about this too. Look, Josh Sweat has played eight hundred and like ninety plays. That's He's played almost. 250 more plays than he did a year ago, Angel. They have no depth at yeah. the edge position, guys. Oof. Their two young tackles are hitting walls right now. You know who the best DT is? Fletcher Cox. Yeah, he's been Fletcher, better. Much better than I, I would want him much back. Better. Much better. But I Brandon, would want Graham, him back. Brandon Graham, who will be leaving us imminently, oh, yes. said, it's all right in front of us. We haven't lost anything yet. He said, and you're listening to your pride, Brandon. Were you not watching the game we just watched? You couldn't stop a thing. You couldn't stop anything. Now you're telling me it's in front of you. Well, guess what? Everything that's been in front of you has been right behind you. That runs right past you. Get it up behind you. It's your best gonna days be your rear ugly. Damn. Right, Angel, the best days are in the rearview mirror, right? Oh, now. it is. It's true. And I uh, do, do they lose to the Giants? You. What's that? Do they lose to the Giants? Final score, 27-22 Giants. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Nostril Damas has spoken. <laughs> With that said, my friends, he, he, predict, he, he predicted – the end of the world for the Eagles season. <laughs> he said it. Oh, by the way, you know, there's the curse of the babe. We now have the curse of the Sirianni not showing up in his final week for Angelo. Yeah. When Angelo was bowing That's out. Right. I'm going to call this now the curse of Angelo Cataldi no. on Sirianni because things have gone sideways. Ever Listen since to me. That. I gave him the Malloy. Oh, you gave – oh. It's the curse of the schnoz. Remember something, folks. When an Italian throws the maloik, you got to make sure you got to kind of throw it off here because it's really a deadly thing here. When you do like that, you know, it's, it's no good, man. I only bring that thing out when I have to. <laughs> man, you're the best, my friend. You Take bet, care, buddy. Thank you, my friend. See you soon. Bye-bye. Great Angelo Cataldi. Very good. All right. Hey, by the way, um, Tone, Gary Cobb, 430. He's good to go. So we will get Gary Cobb on here, too. <sighs> Tone will be with us at 330. We're going to get back into it here in a second. Wow. Nick Sirianni coaching for his job. We're going to hit on that. We're going to hit on that, okay? Don't forget our good friends at Hooters. Absolutely fabulous time during this holiday time. Happy New Year to you, too. All the great um, gift certificates that we have, $5 that you have with those gift cards. You guys can go and end up winning yourself an opportunity at winning some great merchandise and great gift. All you have to do is email us, danceleoshow at gmail.com. You may win some gift cards as well and gift certificates and some merchandise from us. You can also go to Hooters2Go.com. Great specials like we have. Lunch specials Monday through Friday, 1130 to 3 p.m. Boneless wings. Happy hours Monday through Friday, 4 to 6. Six items, six bucks. Hour number two coming up. And I want to talk about Sirianni. Is he, is he coaching for his job? Hit the like button. Keep it here on the National Football Show. 
Eat chicken wings, buy Hooters things. Christmas is near. Shop, have a beer. Christmas shopping shouldn't be hard. Give your friends a Hooters gift card. This year, stuff their stockings and yours too with a one size fits all gift card. Buy a $25 Hooters gift card and receive a $5 Santa's bonus card. Make it Hooters for the holidays. Eat chicken wings, buy Hooters things. Christmas is near. Gift cards are here. Good at Hooters everywhere now. Hooters gifts are always favored.